mat's been open. Oh, it's busted. Junk, it's junk. Combining along here and it's like 70 bushel corn. This don't look like 70 bushel corn. Yeah, I'm leaving a nice trail because my clean green elevators are opened up. <sighs> Wonder how long that's been like that. I knew something was wrong, and then I backed up. I don't think it was doing this long, because I, like, I did go through some 70 bushel corn back there, and I'm like, why ain't it coming back? And now I've got a nice trail, and it's on Eric's field, so I suppose that'll be, you won't be happy. I'm broke down, Chris, I'm broke down. What happened? Clean green elevator door latch busted off and dumping all the corn right on the ground. How is that possible? I don't know. It tore the tab right off of the thing. Uh, I don't know. Sad part is I think this will be a somewhat easy fix. Only I do not think that I have a drill bit or drill set with. But we will uh, right. see what we got here. We were just getting going too. Second round of the day. Oh, no, I parked on the... Nope, gotta have to turn it around. It's the dusty side. This ain't gonna work. Ain't gonna work. All right, I turned around. So, I got two different options here from... I don't know if you can see up in there, but there's just a little, like, tack weld. I don't even know. It looks like it was plug welded. There was a hole there, and then something welded it on. Well, anyways, that's broke. But it's a part of this whole assembly, so I have option A drilling holes and putting smaller bolts than this in there, but I don't like how that will rub the head off and maybe hook the paddles that are inside of here. Or option B would be strap that up, shove a bolt through here, and hope to God it don't rip the rest of it off. Redneck ingenuity right there. <laughs> Keep her moving. It's not stupid I, if it works. I put bolts in there to we got a couple of different insurances, but I think I think this will get us back to the farm after, you know, the rest of the season. Welder required. Yeah, we gotta get the welder. Okay, well, hopefully that holds. Let me know if I'm leaving any more yellow streaks. All right, look at how many corn stalks bales are out there. Wow, yielding w quite well for them, it appears. I wonder how abusive that is on equipment, baling corn stalks. Come on. Okay, let that not happen again. There's something really bad going on. There is more than what leads the eye going on with this machine. What is the problem? I heard something pop. Well, that's still working. Deconstructed upstream, boys. This is the type of situation where bad words tend to come out. We've got mass deconstruction. I'm down. That's what that pop was. Notice how there's no corn in here? Well, there's your problem. The shaking was more than it could bear. I told you, I told you that that was gonna show itself. And it did. Is the gearbox good? Oh, it turns so freely when there's no belt. Oh, good grief. 
Okay, well, I need a new one of these. I need a new one of, this dog is all laid up. And this should come on the new auger. All right, to the farm, now we go to the farm. We're down, combine down. So this all makes a lot more sense now. That door blew out because the corn had nowhere to go. And it ripped this off instead of slugging. Then I go with a heavy duty ratchet strap model. Then that uh, doesn't give out. It blows your belt all because this broke off. Well, this is gonna cost some money. Don't tell me you're broke too. Yep. Why? Zero, eight. Snap. Well, we want to take it off this one because this one's down and out. Snap the load tube gearbox off or the load tube broke off. Yeah, it's good. Well, mine's now a parts machine. <laughs> Why? The smoke on here is the bubble logger. Yeah, the bottom dog is now inside my cab. Holding. Boy, when the wheels fly off, they really fly off, don't they? I guess so. <laughs> Can't help but laugh, huh? Yeah, Unbelievable. What did your event sound like? This just wasn't feeding. <laughs> Imagine that. Parts combine. New chain on, now let's see if it plugs. That's a lot of product going in. We were hoping there was nothing in there that snapped the feeder house in the first place. Did it work? We good? This is good. Oh! oh. Ah, Brody! I'm over time! Brody! Be careful! That's, that's good tension. We good? I hope so. I broke one of those one time before, so... I've never that broke one before. I've busted one before. I don't know what causes it, but... I, you know, I didn't quite ram it so full when I did it. Huh? It happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's fixed up with used parts off my combine. Yeah. See how my day is gonna go. Are you fixing? Trying. Yeah, he's been grinding and everything. Hammer. We're going to Benson now, not out with him. Okay. You, you're trying to fix this old dilapidation? Put that on the top. It's right here. We'll put the fuel on fire. It's hot. It's not burning this corn leaf. That's good. I feel the warmth though. That's good. It's, it was blue here 30 seconds ago. <laughs> Me and Chris are gonna go back to the farm in my combine. Start tearing into that. Brody and Eric will stay out here. This is actually Eric's field. Why does all the bad things have to do when you're custom harvesting? God, I feel bad. It's one thing when you waste your own crop. It's another thing when you waste, waste someone else's. I guess all said and done, I didn't catch that chain door for the Elevator door open for you know just about a half a mile, so I'm sure there'll be comments made <laughs> Okay, I'm picking Chris up and we're out of here fixing time At least it starts The pieces are coming home, huh? Yep. That's junk This has been stole from me going on down there. Oh, is that your solution? <laughs> this is just a parts machine now. All right, we just go go take the parts off one and fix it. Can you imagine the comments that they're, that they're gonna say, if it was a red one, it would still be in the field. Stuck there, not moving <laughs> too. No, they all break down. Me and Kenny have really been having a bout back in the back there. A bout? A bout ready to... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I gotta take that thing for a test drive to see if it's going to uh, quit having a fit. Oh, okay. It's like a seizure type of thing. It just fuel filters, and we'll see if that fixes it. That oil leak, I suppose, down there comes from the last guy. Oh, look at here. I gotta go check the dryer. <laughs> oh my, oh my. Oh my, we got a whole lot of 
of junk here. Oh, we gotta let that drain out. I don't know how many bushels on the ground. Well, this sure comes apart quite easy. We took the poly liner out. I'm not sure if that caused the issue or not, but poly liner is gone. And the auger is down there. And grandma's going to get parts. And we're still just assembling stuff so we can get a belt on now. And with any luck at all, the parts will be right when they show up. Right? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're into it for 40 minutes so far. So this is on the gearbox, it's in the tank. And then there's that piece that I had in my hand in the cab is supposed to be welded onto here. And from further examination, it appears like it wasn't inserting onto this far enough, which was causing probably the vibration. Who knows? Long story short, it was vibrating and now it's Junk. Junk. And that's thousand dollars. This I don't know what it costs, but that's shot. So we get to take this off. This is good yet. And then new and reassemble. And that's not going back in. More more junk. Top of the auger bearing. Alright, well good thing I ordered that new Chris or that would have been more disappointment. It's gonna go right there. Yes, that'll work. All right, Grandma just got back. We quickly assembled this new bearing, auger. We get to go way up there. Not a fan of it, but I'm also not a fan of manual labor. There's Chris. <laughs> All right. This time, wait for me to help you. Right about this height is when I start to get nervous. Okay, uh, it's the same exact thoughts I have. Well, we have arrived to see the mess of parts that we get to reassemble. It hasn't been long. We got a little dinner break and then Grandma was here. Do we remember how this goes together? Not at all. Yeah, that's my thoughts exactly. Doggo, did you fix Kenny? Kenny is not fixed and Kenny is... Well, let's just say the lady at the scale house, when the black smoke was rolling out of Kenny and I'm sitting at the ethanol plant, it got a little, uh, yeah. Did she ask what you were doing? She said I thought there was trouble. <laughs> okay, well, we're almost ready to go back together so then you can drive Kenny the rest of the day. I suppose. <laughs> 45 miles an hour, top speed. Oh my. Especially uphill. <laughs> race truck. Dre really racing. I'll be last again. Yeah, that's it. Put your fingers stuck. Okay. You got it. Okay. Let me have it. Okay, that, that was fun. We got her done, two hours and 40 minutes. Even timed ourselves. I think we are ready to fire it up. I'm gonna put you guys right here. Watch the mass flow come out. Cause the rotor's full and everything's full. Was 
it go okay? It looked like it wasn't shaking nearly a quarter as bad. Well, I think we're ready to combine. Well, nothing like spending a couple grand and back up and running. Chris fixed Brody's or cut the broken link out of the feeder house chain. So I put that on. Hopefully, that's the only weak link, literally. It's working! It's working! And it's even coming into the machine. I planted this with the deer speed planter in the dark in all these rolling hills. Eric got his shed grub fixed this summer. If anything, it's drier, I would say. Drier corn, that's good. Eric's corn's, uh, this corn is going to uh, town because our bend site's filling up. This is unbelievable. I'm holding the camera level. We are down and that way. This field is always extremely exciting because it's such different terrain than what we're used to farming. It's actually the spring in the uh, 8370 that was on that demo planter. It was all that tractor had for traction to pull it up these hills. Like it was spinning for all it had. Hey Brody. Hello Brody. It's good to be back. There's nothing like starting your morning off with a breakdown. Feels good to be back with the boys. I feel slightly in the way. Yeah, I don't know what you're doing. Back her up, boys! Hey, there's a black dog running in the field. Raymond. Yeah, she's upset because you're taking out her breakfast. <laughs> she's always got a new stock in the yard when I get home. At least you don't have to buy dog food. I never did in the first place. <laughs> I think Eric's going to put Raymond in the cab with him. We'll see. We'll see. I said you better put her in the house or in your cab because I do not want to witness a dog getting run over or combined up. That would uh, not be good, good at all. I would That would really bother me actually. Well, I last long. Now my clutches on my tank are burning again, so I get to go put the bolts back in. It was nice while that lasted. Once you burn them once, they're just, they need to be replaced. But I thought that the 17% corn would work unless we left a tool in the tank but I don't think we did I'm going to go put tear that all apart the elevators closing so we can't continue here at Eric's so we got to go to a different field anyways so it's a it's gonna be one of those days that you just crack up as a did what we could did what we could all right so this is what happens here I did not do a good job of explaining the last time because I had five guys around me and I wanted to combine corn but I'm waiting for my bolts that I forgot to put in the combine in case this ever happened. So they're sitting in the shop. So someone's bringing those down. But anyways, this is how these work. And I know I've talked about them in the past. I love these because with two corn combines, carts get full, it's nice to shut off and your unload auger system shuts off. But I've burnt these enough times that I think they're now shot. The 28% corn did not work with these. Then I slipped them and now I got into some 20% down in that low bottom on Eric's and she won't unload or very well could be some part that we forgot in the combine which i don't think so but who's to know anyways gotta pull these off and then they're take the sprocket off the clutch ram some bolts in so that this don't turn anymore and it's direct drive it's not too bad you gotta take the chain off take this mechanism off and pull this off like that and then you ram two bolts in side there and then it it works it's like a 15 minute job when you have the bolts and I don't have the bolts so I'll be waiting for 20 at least I'll be ready when they get here and there sits a truck that we think an injector failed on because they can't even drive it anywhere so I don't really know, and it's loaded, so I really don't know what we're gonna do with that. Hopefully someone can baby it to town, because it's gotta go to town to get unloaded, and then maybe to a shop that does injectors of some sort. Now if I add my bolts, it's really small bolt. Surprising actually that it holds up to the load, but you put a bolt in here and a bolt in there, 
put this back on, that back on, chain back on, ready to roll. You can see they've been really, really warm. I don't know if the camera will focus, but it's, it's blue. Good indication that it's left the chat. I have a small inkling of a feeling that there may be a pry bar in the grain tank. I'm going to have to call Chris. And if that is the case, why this one was slipping, that would indicate that when I fire this up, something very bad could happen. I'm, I'm actually really nervous now, really nervous. I'm just like a blister, I show up when the work's done. I got a question for you. Do you remember taking a two foot pry bar out of the grain tank? Why? Well, remember when we were looking for it? Yeah. I never took it out of the grain tank, did you? Well, no. <laughs> That's what I was afraid about. I can rotate this one. Yeah. I can't even budge this one. <laughs> so I'm very in fear of firing this up and causing more trouble. But I don't also know how we're going to get it unloaded without causing more trouble. And let, unless we take it all back apart and unplug this one, and unbolt it, unplug it, so that that one will go and this one won't go, we unload it and then we hand shovel the front of the hopper out just to see if there's a pry bar in there. <laughs> it's exactly my thoughts. There's definitely a pry bar in there. Definitely a pry bar in there. Do we have a shovel? Alright, well that explains that. We'll tear it back apart. What, that wreck? Oh, it turned. It just shook very violently and made screeching sounds. Oh, perfect. So now we wrapped it around in there. <laughs> okay, we're going to take it apart again. <laughs> I'm so sick of this combine. Is it over yet? What kind of sick human being would ever be a farmer? <laughs> you know, there's... Uh, Probably a nice cozy chair somewhere in a climate controlled environment that it would making be a lot more money than we are. Yeah, it would be too boring and anti exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps getting better. Now we really got up a crick without a paddle. Now, now we sheared the bolts we just put off in there. Well, now I can put it back together and it'll unload the rear, but then we only got one auger. Oh my heavens, heavens, heavens. Call dad, tell him to bring the factory thing. Okay, now that all the bolts are twisted off, we don't even need to remove them, so we put it all back together.
Oh, you wanna know something funny? Chris is also trying to booby trap himself. He left his traps open. I found it! <laughs> oh, hum. This is humbling. Like, call us dumb. You know what? We screwed up. I'm not any more happy about this than... Honestly, it's like... I deserve a butt chewing, let's just say that. Well, as long as there's not any more tools in the system, now that we destroyed the clutch, literally, literally destroyed it, it's not Lancota's fault. I was starting to maybe get a little irritated about that, but I'm glad it slipped. Thumbs down. All right, we put the factory uh, gears on because we actually destroyed that one clutch. So you gotta have both clutches on to have that whole system on. So by destroying one, you have to take the other one off. So we put the factory gears on, ran it, it runs smooth. I got in there, look, there's nothing bent up. So apparently you can, if, if you feel like it, run your pry bars through your unload system. Uh, I think I've had enough for the day of the camera. So guys, I, I'm gonna see you in the next video. Quite humbling experience. I can laugh, but I have to laugh or else I really get upset. So we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. And uh, don't, don't forget tools in your grain tank. Tip of the day. See you guys later.